Warning, this podcast contains strong, offensive, and misogynistic language that some listeners may find offensive. The name's Vert. Personal, original Vert. And I run the P. Vert Detective Agency. The year is 2055, and the police have been defunded. So if you need a police investigation, the cops will charge you a thousand big ones a day. Because of this, the government introduced the P.I. Act, where the private investigators can undercut the police so justice can become affordable. These are my case files. Welcome to Pipton Manor Boarding School for Girls, Mr. Vertz. So, uh, I'm the uh, head teacher, Miss Honeywell, and I need to really, really fill you in about what's going on with this little pervert. Okay, well please, please tell me what this pervert is doing. Well, of an evening, he appears at the school gate that's, that's opposite the dormitories, just across the playing fields, and he's wearing a full-length trench coat. You know, the old brown Colombo style Mac ones? Yeah, I know the style. Yeah, and he waits until it's nearly lights out so all the girls can see him. And then he runs through the gate and sets off all the floodlights. He opens his jacket up and he starts dancing naked in front of the children. Oh, what are we gonna do? It's it's so grotesque. I zoned out. I was hoping that this, this teacher, Miss Honeywell, would dance for me all naked. And yeah, I'd love to ride on this girl. I really do. She's really, really fit. She's wearing quite a low-cut top, but conservatively done. You know, white. It's more of a blouse than a crop top, but this blouse is quite small, showing a bit of belly. A bit of her flat, washboard belly. You can see the abs slightly beneath the skin. A very good prime example of fitness, along with her short but sensible pleated skirt. She definitely looked like a teacher and her uh, skirt was regulation height. I'm sure if you got a ruler out, it'll be dead on the bare minimum and maximum lengths that that skirt's supposed to be according to their uniform. Because this lady, she looks like she will lead by example. And oh yes, I would make a great example of her. Oh yeah, this example be all over my- Will you pay attention? Sorry, I was having a think about how I was going to go about doing things. Yes, but I know that you um, were having your mind elsewhere. I'm sorry uh, for that little bit outburst. It's just, uh, I, I know when people zone out at me because I've been a teacher for long enough. I know, don't worry about this, Miss Honeywell. Don't worry about this. How, um, how often again does he come? I told you, he comes every night. Just before 9 p.m. Okay then. Well, where would be a good place for me to sit so I can't be seen and I can just access the field as soon as the light comes on? Oh, there's a little caretaker's room just directly opposite, just by the uh, ladies' toilets. Okay, it's not a problem. I'll come back later on with some supplies whilst I stake this place out. And um, how would you like me to proceed with this one? Do you want me to arrest him, bearing in mind a prosecution would be expensive? Or I could uh, show him a bit of justice, but the girls will end up having to see this justice. It's all down to you and how much money you wish to spend. So you're saying that your fee includes a beating of his life versus a very expensive prosecution yeah well I think that the parents would appreciate a bit of that value for money I couldn't agree more especially when you're beating the shit out of a little nonce like this yeah Okay then, violence is uh, authorised. I'll make sure that these girls understand in tomorrow morning's assembly on what happened. And and the moral of the story would be yeah, value for money. Exactly. You'll be teaching these girls the right way about things. Because who wants to spend a lot of money on an investigation when I could just catch him and with my licence I'm authorised to use violence as and where needed. Yes, especially when children are involved. Especially when children are so, uh, Miss Honeywell, is there a Mr. Honeywell? No, there isn't. Okay. Would you like... I'm a lesbian. I'm... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I got the wrong message. How about we just go for coffee one day as friends? You can bring your uh, mistress along with you. Yes, that would seem very, very nice. 
I'm sure that my uh, partner would love to meet a person like you. Yeah, I'm sure your partner would. I'm sure your partner would. Well, Miss Honeywell, I'm gonna head off and I'll come back in a little bit, yeah? Just gonna get my supplies. Yeah, that's not a problem. I returned about an hour or so later on with a fair amount of snacks just to keep me going. And, um, yeah. I was just thinking, oh, that Miss Honeywell. Oh, I bet she lets us out real good with her partner. Mm, I have to have a long while to think about that later on. And hopefully, just hopefully, her other half, hopefully she's not a uh, butch one. Hopefully, just hopefully, they're both as really fit as each other. Mm, I love a good old lesbo session, I do. Yeah. I looked at my watch. It's going to be a couple more minutes before he turns up. If he turns up. Like clockwork. Just before 9 o'clock before the lights went out. I could see a silhouette of a man. In the gateway. Across the field opposite the dormitories. And yeah. It was this guy. He'd scaled the fence. And was standing there at the gate. He then proceeded to run onto the middle of the field. Setting off all the floodlights. And there he was. He had his trench coat done up. And then all of a sudden, the trench coat came off and he started dancing around and swinging the trench coat around his head in the air, throwing it up around, doing cartwheels and oh my god, you could see absolutely everything. This sturdy little bastard, his dick was bouncing around and I really did not want to see that. It was getting hidden in and out between his gut as well. Oh my god, you dirty little bastard. I put my feet down on the floor and I darted out to the field where he saw me and decided he was going to make a run for it. But I was faster than he was. He was a bit of a fat bastard, to be honest. I ran over, I dived towards him, and then ended up sending him face first down into the muddy field. Hey, you little fucking bastard, what are you doing? Yeah, I can't understand what you're saying. Oh, sorry, I better get your face out of the mud. Hey, why are you being like this, you little bastard? There's children there. Hey, I just want to have a bit of fun. You think getting your cock out in front of little children is a bit of fun, you little dirty little pedo? Hey, guess what? What? Ah! What the fuck did you do that for? Because you're a dirty little fucking pedo and I'm going to beat the shit out of you, little fucking bastard. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> no, don't! Ah! Please don't! Ah! You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to just say nothing at all. Look at you, you little fucking bastard. I just beat the fuck out of you, you little know, fucking nonce. Just take that as a fucking lesson. You're lucky that you're not fucking dead. And you fucking come back here again, you little scumbag. And I swear down, I'm gonna slit your fucking throat and I'm gonna dump you in a fucking river. Get the fuck out of here now. Go on. Report to Miss Honeywell. Thank you for listening to Gumshoe. Percival Vert will be back with another case file next week. If you enjoyed today's content, why not check out our other fictional podcast, A Tribute to Men That Hate Their Jobs. This podcast is about a man that is trapped in a job he hates because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We also have 30 Years Since, which is a sci-fi podcast set in a post-alien invasion Earth. Both links are in the description below. Master X Media also has a YouTube channel called The X Review, where Paul reviews and reacts to a different music video each and every day. The link is also in the description below. Don't forget to follow Master X Media on Facebook, Gab, Twitter and Parler. Once again, the links are in the description below. Thank you and we shall catch you soon.